David Allen Greer. Join me on a trip that's gonna be all that and a bag of chips. What up, what up, what up? It's 90s time on Black to the Future. We're gonna get jiggy with the whole damn decade, showing you the illest black pop culture. So don't touch that remote white people. Yeah! Woo! Yes! Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. We'll toss back some 40s. So bold, friend. Watch black women wait to exhale and entertain white folks with hootie. What are they doing on the black show? No, hell no. What are they doing here? Plus a million black men freaking out Washington. One people get nervous with two black men in a room. You can imagine what it was like in D.C. <laughs> they here. Get your children, stay in the house. No school today. And of course, double time. <laughs> it's like this and like that and like this and uh, it's all like the important like questions like will be answered. Can I do that? All of the celebrated black icons will be celebrated. Even me, Davey G. Nuts and honey. <laughs> What'd you say? Nut and honey. <laughs> Prepare to go black to the future. Once you go black, you never go back. Martin. Martin. It's a little show. You hear the theme song, you gotta stop what you're doing. I just can sit at home and watch all of Martin and can remember almost every single episode. Like, oh my God, I remember that episode. Number one fan of Martin. What up, what up, what up? Martin Lawrence really took that show to another level and showed all of his size, all of his talent. Martin was my favorite character because Martin played every character on the show. What do you want? I want you to get a smaller head, but I ain't got no control over that. <laughs> Martin is a fool, man. I think you're wrong in the house. I said to Rome in the house. Shanae-nae. Everybody knows the Shanae-nae. Shanae-nae sounded like my sister. Oh, my God. 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 That's cute. I didn't realize that that was Martin Lawrence playing the Shanae-nae. I said, holy cow, that's a really wild-looking woman. Shanae-nae was all about Martin. She wanted to get up close and personal, but it wasn't happening because, you know, he had Gina. Martin and Gina, that was, that's the best relationship in the whole wide world. I had the biggest crush on Tisha Campbell. Oh, my gosh. I thought she was so fine. He and Tisha Campbell together, unbelievable. I'm just, just do so great together. Say, I'm the man. You the Say, man. I'm the man. You the man. You the man, baby. Martin Lawrence was the man. He put a hole in the 90s, man. Comedically, you could not touch his show. I wish the Martin show would come back. Wish they would all just come on and come back. Just give us one more season. <laughs> I am leaving you for her. Way to tell four black women who are dealing with black life and being scorned and dealing with no good black men. Way to exhale was definitely a sister flick that the brothers had to go see or she could get your ass kicked. It was a bit of bitch convention. Men do not like waiting to exhale, and we don't care. I give you 11 f***ing years of my life, and you're telling me that you're leaving me for a white woman? Woo! Yeah. It definitely made black men think twice about dating black women. There's a big difference between white women anger and black women anger. A white woman scorned will kind of complain to her friends about you and maybe she'll get on her blog and say some very nasty things. But a sister, you know, they just take the anger to a whole nother level. Yeah. Yeah. Who can forget Angela Bassett? Ha oh, oh, the holy grail of movie scenes. Every woman has wanted to set their man's stuff on fire. I'm gonna set this on fire. Going to 
if I had a dude that had a car, I would burn his car too. But the dude I got, he had shoes. So I just boo-booed in his shoes. The only person that actually made it through a good relationship was a fat girl. That relationship between Loretta Devine and Gregory Hines was just awesome to watch. Would you like to have dinner with us tonight? It's just leftovers. I got some leftovers, some collard greens, macaroni and cheese, some yams, some turkey necks, some candied yams, a little potato salad, fried chicken, peach cobbler, German chocolate cake, potato salad, and um, did I mention some collard greens? Oh, just a little something, just a little snack. <laughs> I like a woman with a little meat on her palms. Yeah, we love Gregory. Uh-huh, come on. Waiting to as hell is another movie that puts the black man down. That was a bad dating week for dudes. I tell you what, man, if you come up and we got that movie on the TV, just go on back out. Go on back where you was at and wait till the movie's over and then give it about two hours after that. But take your stuff with you. <laughs> back to the 90s. Michael Jordan's the greatest earthling to ever touch a round ball, ever. It was clear from the beginning that this brother was something different. He was something no one had ever seen before. A little, a big, I was a Michael Jordan fan. Jordan was letting everybody have it. People were like, Jordan, please, don't, don't score too crazy on me, please. No, Jordan, don't do it! Ah, why'd you do that? My family's here, man! Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, never won championship. And Michael loves the fact that they didn't win it because of him. He reminds them all the time. Sometimes I feel like he is me. A lot of the white kids couldn't pull it off. They couldn't do it. So there was no being like Mike. You had to be like Larry. That's, and that's okay. That's fine. Mike is an icon. You got people in other countries like Michael Jordan! Six championships in a decade, man. That's unbelievable. And he retired halfway through there and came back. Michael Jordan has won, I mean, a lot of games. But his last shot in this Bulls uniform is probably the best shot of his career. He should have walked like this all the way out the gym. He's like, all right, see y'all later. I'm out. We're such a bitch. And just left. Michael Jordan is a bad dude. He was basketball, he still is basketball. Play. Hootie and the Blowfest, what are they doing on the black show? No, hell no, what are they doing here? There's nothing I can do. I only wanna be with you. I like I only wanna be with you. I mean, I, I loved it the first three, four million times I heard it. It kind of amazed me, because, you know, it's like, why is a black dude singing? He sounds like a black guy that learned to sing from white guys. Maybe he was in Greece in high school. It made a lot of black people think, like, man, if I had a white band, I could make a lot of money. Hootie's audience, a lot of white people with hacky sacks, dirty backpacks, a lot of white kids with dreads. Brothers didn't flock to you. Because it's, you know, it's rock and roll. And some of the brothers are like, I ain't listening to that, man. Who'd he singing that white stuff? Really? Listen to it. Darius Rucker is doing country music now. That is a feat. He's only the third African-American male ever to go number one in the country charts. Here's a black man that made white people just love him. That takes talent. He's never going to get pulled over. Back to the 90s. That sure brings back a lot of memories. You know, back when I was the first black hacky sack champion. Coming up, see if you can still do the kid and play. Go ahead, come on. Three and yes, plus. Why stop at 40 ounces? <laughs> I'm waiting for the 80s to come out and we're like, I just want to see thugs. He's like, yo, what's up? And Steven or Stefan, you decide. Urkel is maybe who I am inside. Like, I'm a good person, but Stefan is the suave. Like, girl, I'm going to take you out later on. You ready? But first, time to celebrate some men in blue who happen to be black. Freeze! This Ice T. Time for Brothers with Badges 90s edition. Yo, yo, pimps up. The Reginald Bell Johnson is Officer Carl Winslow on Family Matters. Man had patience. 
I'd have shot Urkel after two shows. Then we got my homie Chris Tucker as James Carter in Rush Hour, with special props to Jackie Chan for putting up with his loud ass. Finally, Wesley Snipes, true player in Money Train, because you know he was probably getting with J-Lo in that flick. A young J-Lo, too, back when the buck was like, BAM! I'm Ice-T, and those are the 90s brothers with badges. Now get out of here before I plant some weed on you. Late morning. Plastic songs of the 90s. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. This song will give you flashbacks to 1993. What is love by Hathaway? Much love to the late notorious B.I.G. with Mo Money, Mo Problems. <sighs> what was he right? Hold on, wait a minute, who do I see? Hey, I like them now, especially that little Indian looking one. It's TLC with Creep. Of course, of course, of course, of course. I'm Chili and those were the most fantastic songs of the 90s. Words. Ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> I know you're gonna be in attendance at the super depth throwdown jizzam of the year. Woo! That's all right. House Party was a movie about these two kids throwing a house party. Well, I'm kid and I played kid. Uh, and play, play, play. When your parents go out of town, what do you do? You get Martin Lawrence as your DJ and you have a party. House Party had the three basic elements of any teen film, which is kids messing around, kids trying to get laid, and kids throwing a party. Before House Party came out, I didn't know who Kid and Play was. But once that movie came out, oh, I was all over Kid and Play. I had Kid and Play posters up. I was always trying to, when I washed my hair, try to stick it up like an eraser head. There's a big difference between a white house party and a black house party. The white house parties that I've been to is brightly lit, and it's a little loud and, you know, boisterous, and there's usually white guys in the kitchen doing some type of alcoholic stunts. I had house parties when I was in high school. Well, they never involved uh, synchronized dancing. I wish they did. Remember when everybody used to do the kid and play? I learned the whole dance routine. I thought I was the kid and play expert. <laughs> One, two, three, and yes! That was a different time in hip-hop, man. You know, uh, dudes dancing together, man. You know what I mean? Then we got all hard. It's like, I ain't dancing no more. But back then, that's what we did. People always come up to me and they add two things they ask about. Well, three things. Where's play? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> two, what happened to your hair? And do the kid and play with me? I can't tell you how many pictures. I take pictures. I take hundreds of pictures every year with people where, where we're just going like this. And it's cool. Play. Come on, baby. Oh, 40s, man. 40s is fortified malt liquor. What's up, my old friend? 40s is like that very economical, inexpensive way to just get toe up real quick. Somebody told you I used to mess with this. This is set up. This is going to show up in a lot of rap videos. White people are going to go more for the 12-pack uh, of light beer. That would be what Whitey's bringing to the table. The hood don't do six packs. They don't do cakes, cakers. So. Back in like the 70s, 80s, you had Billy D. Williams with Coke 45. And then all of a sudden, St. Ives became the malt liquor for the MTV generation. St. Ives became the new drink, right? And that was because, you know, all the rappers was drinking it. I met Nate Dogg, and I said, man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what my favorite song is from you. He's like, what? He was like, <laughs> went to the corner store. You know what I'm looking for, St. Ives. I drank eyes one morning before we went to school. I never forget it. I threw everything up out of my stomach. Then I had the whole class back up like, shh. <laughs> you gotta pour out a sip. And that's out of respect for the homies that's not here. The problem is if you're drinking in somebody's house, you can't pour it out, you know? If you really feel the need to do it, wait until the bottom is back washing hot and go, that's for my friend Bob. Love you, Bob. 
40 ounces were not good for our community. We found out that a lot of that stuff was just going to kill us. So, you know, they up, up your liquor status and get a better grade of alcohol. <laughs> I'm waiting for the 80s to come out and we're like, I just want to see thugs. It's like, yo, what's up? Back to the 90s. Oh, baby. Stage 29, you know what I mean? If you set it up, it's nighttime, it's sexy. Arsenio! It's Arsenio! Arsenio! I used to get in trouble all the time for watching Arsenio Hall because he came on so late, but I had to see him. I had to see the finger. Yeah! Let's get busy! He made it a late night party. Every time you came on to watch Arsenio Hall's late night talk show, you knew the dog pound was gonna be there. Hoo, 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 hoo. Those people over there are people who are violating their parole just by being here. Just by being here, violating their parole. It was sort of like the twilight of Johnny Carson's career, so I think there was an audience that wasn't being served in late night, and Arsenio grabbed a hold of it. He was like the one host and the one show that was really giving a lot of light to the hip-hop acts. Step it up, step it up, it's all right. Arsenio had a chemistry with everybody that he sat on the couch with. The only person Arsenio Hall could not interview was Eddie Murphy, because I remember every time he'd interview Eddie Murphy, he'd laugh throughout the entire interview. How was it, direct? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, start. One of the most memorable episodes when President Clinton came on and he played saxophone. That's when Bill Clinton captured like every black person's heart in America. Hands down, that was the best nighttime late show ever. Ever. The I sure do miss our city. You know, there are three things you can see from up here in space. Mount Kilimanjaro, the Great Wall of China, and Arsenio's giant index finger. Look, there it is. Coming up, ladies, if you can't get laid here, then something is wrong with you. I crashed a million man march. A million black men? I'm gonna find me one. Shoot. Plus, Snoop and Dre helped the planet by going <coughs> green. <laughs> it had a big pot leaf <laughs> on the CD, and I still didn't know what Chronic was. I was like, oh, they're environmentalists. This is nice. But first, let's explore some catchphrases of color. Take it away, Jesse. Hello, America. I'm Reverend Jesse Jackson, civil rights leader, political activist, and professor of phraseology. Here are the catchphrases that became 90s crazes. <laughs> When this clown is around, don't be a brat, because like the man said, homie, don't play that. Like actors haven't won a lot of Oscars, and that's not funny. But Cuba Gooden did it for yelling, show me the money. Tag team was a duo, and the rap music biz was known for proclaiming, whoop, there it is. I'm Jesse Jackson, reminding you, keep catchphrases alive. First truck stop game on the next Rock of Love bus. Go! In the building, we're gonna talk about the ladies in the 90s. I'm talking about them sassy, smart mouthed, big booty, and they was proud of their booties in the 90s. Don't trip. She's just a cosmic girl. Tony Braxton is the reason I fell in love with legs. You know what I'm saying? Tony Braxton looked like she ran steps with Robert Newhouse. Go back and Google that, bitch. Mariah Carey. Now, Mariah Carey had that voice. That voice that make your nuts tingle. Real high like that. Nick Cannon, I envy you, homie, because I hope you meeting it and getting that soprano cracking. In Vogue. In Vogue was them chicks who said, you're never going to get it. And I was the guy that said, but I'm going to keep trying, that's it for them badass chicks in the 90s. Independent, wild, free, big booties, and proud of it. Hi, 
I loved Family Matters. Definitely a fan of Family Matters. Family Matters was kind of the Cosby Show light. This is all about a Chicago family and just the crazy kooky things they get into. At first, the family matters, and then Steve Urkel was really the only one that mattered later on. Oh, did I do that? Did I do that? Did I do that? If you ever wore glasses and you were skinny and black, then forget it. You were Urkel. Everybody's going to come on the show, and they're all going to make fun of Urkel. I was Urkel. I didn't get the girls. I got laughed at by everybody. I had the high water pants. I was just called Urkel from passing cars and from kids that were much bigger than me. I endured it. What's being stuffed in the locker? It's not a big deal. He was always in love with Laura Winslow. Laura, my aunt. Angel, great news! I've got two tickets to the Greater Chicago Rock and Mineral Show. I hear they have a fabulous gravel exhibit this year. Thanks, but I'm busy. I always wanted Laura and Steve to get together. She just put her pride aside and just see him for who he is. They ended up developing an alter ego for Urkel called Stefan. She Steve Urkel made this machine, right? When he went in the machine, he came out, he was Stefan. You know, he was smooth and sexy. Baby, your beauty is blinding. Urkel is maybe who I am inside. Like, I'm a good person. But Stefan is the suave. Like, girl, I'm gonna take you out later on. You ready? Hi, Laura. Your father was showing me how to carry you over the threshold. Maybe we should celebrate smart, articulate, young black men instead of make fun of them the way they did with Urkel. I'm gonna stop this interview. All right. We're going back home to do something about what's going on in our lives and in our families and in our communities. October 16, 1995. Mr. Farrakhan and a body of leaders just have a million Man March. A gathering of a million black men marching to Washington to have fellowship, to come together as one united front. I crashed the Million Man March. A million black men? I'm gonna find me one. Shoot. It's just like the black man. Anything to get out of work, huh? Anything to get out of paying bills. Since uh, Louis Farrakhan put the march together, that rubbed a, a lot of white people the wrong way, which was great. Let's say the Million Man March had been led by Wayne Brady. Check, check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then people might have been, well, well, that's nice. White people get nervous with two black men in a room. You can imagine what it was like in D.C. Lock your doors. Here they come. They're here. Get your children. Stay in the house. No school today. I got to side with white people on this one. I was at the Million Man March. It was positive and everything, but I definitely kept my hands in my pockets. <laughs> I know that dude got a record, and that dude got a record. Minister Louis Farrakhan is accusing the National Park Service of racism. Farrakhan says the Park Service seriously undercounted the amount of people at the Million Man March on Monday. You can see what I can see. You're blind, You're blind from the back. There was a million people there. I don't care what you say. All you had to do is look at the picture. It was just a great day. I was, I'm, I'm glad to be able to say I was there. Back to the 90s. All right, and what did you think of The Chronic? Oh, do you have some? <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the album? Oh, cut. One, two, three, into the phone. Snoop Doggy Dogg and Dr. Dre is at the dump. Hip hop was, was not the same after Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. When I was living in Oakland, every car going by was playing one. Two, three, and two, the four. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the door. Dr. Dre was the quintessential hit maker. Pop, 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 Everything was a hit. What all the homies saying? Hell yeah. The Chronic is one of the greatest rap albums ever. I'm from the suburbs. It had a big pot leaf. <laughs> on the CD, and I still didn't know what Chronic was. I was like, oh, they're environmentalists. <laughs> nice. Went solo on that ass, but it's still the same. Long Beach at the spot where I serve my Doggy style. Yeah, that album was huge because it followed Chronic. I grabbed it one day and then listened to it. Within about a week, it became my favorite CD. Laid back. 
Snoop Dogg, I think, introduced all of us to gin and juice. I know about juice. I never put gin in it. Then when I saw putting a gin in it, yeah, I forgot about juice. It's like this and like that and like this, and uh, it's like that and like this and like that, and uh. Now he's, you know, fatherhood and at the football game and love with Shantae and all that's good. But I really actually miss the thug Snoop. It's kind of weird. I'm old. I'm 40. I knew, I knew Dr. J when he was an intern. Get it? <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> intern. Back to the 90s. Dre and Snoop, the chronic. I just smell that CD and I get the munchies. Coming up, poor, poor Ricky. Every time I see that movie, I be wanting him to outrun that bullet. Ricky! And the best damn sketch comedy show ever. Objectively speaking, of course. But first, let's check out some fine, fine black threads. Hi there, I'm downtown Julie Brown with the 90s fashions that were totally fat. One, overalls, HBCU sweatshirt, Halle Berry haircut, sir, fly girl. Two, Jordans, gear from cross colors and a high top fade. And three, baggy jeans, Timberlands, and bandanas. Rest in peace, Tupac. I'm downtown Julie Brown, and those were the fattest fashions of the 90s. I eat. You got it. Hey, what's up? I'm Salt. And I'm Pepper. And it's time to check out the 90s dudes who made us say, what a man. Mm. Lenny Kravitz. Brother needs to show his behind in more videos. Diamond oh. Hansu, star of Amistad. Give us free. <laughs> mm. And finally, one word, Denzel. Mm. Nothing else needs to be said about that, brother. A body like Arnold with the Denzel face. <laughs> Call me. Be married in your dreams, Pep. <laughs> That's it for our What a Man, Men of the 90s. Bye-bye. I'm getting the out of LA. Can't go nowhere without it getting all shut up and Boys in the Hood was a revolutionary movie. If you lived it, when you watched it, it wasn't hard enough. Either they don't know, don't show, or don't care about what's going on in the hood. Our perception of L.A. was, oh, them cats aren't too tough. It's sunny all the time. How tough could it be? Then Boys in the Hood comes out. Boys in the Hood had me terrified to ever come to L.A. I was scared I had family there, and I wanted to call them and be like, don't go outside. Oh. <laughs> it's just like Compton. Everybody was in it. From Morris Chestnut, you had Ice Cube. You had the other black dude, the short one, that fat kid, the girl. Everybody's in there. Cuba Gooding Jr. was in there, too. Cuba Gooding, yeah, his, his character was definitely goody-goody. He was a virgin, but he was trying to get, always get on honey's trying to get some ass. He still ain't yet. <laughs> Trey and Ricky were driving around, the cops pulled them over, harassed them. I didn't do nothing. Cuba Gooding, you know, he was, they had him under pressure. And it really screwed his brain up. I'm so tired of this he started wilding out, baby. Why did I make Cuba Gooding sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger? We got a problem here? You got to check your neck. Doughboy was gangster. Turn your punk ass off. When uh, Ice Cube was nice and round and had a jerry curl, but nobody said nothing because we were scared of him. When I say cut, we're going to cut through these houses, OK? Gotcha. <laughs> The craziest scene in Boys in the Hood is the end with Ricky. I totally did not expect it, and neither did he. Ricky is running from these guys who are trying to gun him down, right? And all of a sudden, he stops because he wants to scratch some lottery tickets. Ricky! Every time I see that movie, I be wanting him to outrun that bullet. People are yelling at the screen. I mean, that's why white people don't go to the films with black people. They like, move, get out the way! Run the other way! The other way! <laughs> Morris Chestnut was a football player, but he didn't get too much yardage on this run. We all gotta go sometime. Hey. Mary J! Love Mary! Oh, Mary! 
411 changed my life. When I heard the CD, I was like, oh man, I was tripping. Real love. I'm searching for real love. Everybody in that mama was singing that song with her and her little fake baseball jersey and everything. They were calling her the new queen of soul. And people got really upset. Because you know the queen of soul is Aretha Franklin. You better leave that title alone. Because Aretha will sit on you and they will never find you again. I'm going down. There's not a, a chick from that era that didn't identify with Mary J. Blige. She's going through all this horrible stuff that women can relate to. Lousy relationship, getting smacked around a little bit, doing the drugs. What did I do wrong? Oh, she sang her pain, and we felt it. it we were all going through it. Yes. <laughs> Some drama with somebody. Somebody. <laughs> came out with the fashions. She had us all out here wearing baseball caps and combat boots, looking like fools. When she came out with blonde, it fit her. I love Mary J's hairstyle because it was just like one of these asymmetrical uh and uh. At some point, you did kind of like, oh, damn, man, you're light, man. It's so, why is it so hard? But now you listen to Mary and she's like, you know, I'm fine. Who'd have thought that Mary J. Blige would be the woman and the singer that has her together? And Whitney Houston <laughs> is bonkers. Who'd have made that bet in, in 1991? Back to the 90s. Hey, single. Oh, in a 90s type world, I'm glad I got my girl. I remember it was like must see TV in my house. You know, I would watch Living Single every week. Why does this keep happening to me? Because you keep looking for someone to carry you. Well, what's wrong with that? They keep dropping your ass. <laughs> the show is about these uh, four beautiful black women who uh, live in New York City, and it, it's these two guys just come down and just wreak havoc. That's Queen Latifah's first jump out in acting. Kadisha was kind of like myself. She was real cool, you know. Can I sleep in here with you? <laughs> Ray, this is a queen-size bed. I mean, there's just enough room for the queen. <laughs> the dynamics of the relationships on the show was hilarious. St. Clair, you know, she was dingy and, you know, not really worldly. And she ended up with uh, Overton. He was the handyman. You know, that was cute, because he was slow, too. What's wrong, baby? Well, I don't know whether to put the succotash with the yellow vegetables or the beans. Why don't they just put it in the middle as a bridge betwixt the two? <laughs> Overton, is there no problem you can't fix? Regine was my girl because she did the wigs. Now, what's the one thing I know better than anybody? Synthetic hair. <laughs> Regine had a wig for every day of Kwanzaa and more. And I loved them all, except the Bob. I never understood it. Four women living under the same roof with no problem. That's not possible. It's not possible at all. I'm sure when they cut, they were like, oh, bitch, uh, yeah, you stood in my light. You stood in my damn light, bitch. Back to the 90s. I love that show. But does anyone believe a grown-up Tootie was living single? I don't think so. She had two roommates. Boom, boom. Man, she was stacked. Coming up, Tybo takes no prisoners, because you got to uh, 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 ain't it. Plus, L.A. loses its mind after the Rodney King verdict. It was understandable, the outrage. What was not understandable is why outrage equal getting yourself a big screen television. But first, let's check out the best stuff that didn't make it into Black to the Future. Waiting to exhale. No, I suggest do not take a date. That is a chick flick. You get all your girlfriends, and then after that movie, we all have a meeting and say, okay, you get rid of yours, you get rid of yours, all right, leave him. Don't burn his stuff. Don't do that. Which my baby did, bro. <laughs> I love you, girl. But anyway, so I can talk about that, because that's my baby. 
everybody, it's Lonnie Love. I got the 411 on the 90s funniest fellas. Bill Bellamy, he ruled Def Comedy Jam, and I love his big lips. Charles S. Dutton, he's a serious dude, but he can be funny too. Here's a surprise one, Mark Curry, from Hanging with Mr. Cooper. You know him? Sinbad, we need more Sinbad these days. Where the hell is Sinbad? I'm Lonnie Love, and those were the 90s funniest fellas. Are you guys ready to get down? Yeah, I tried, Tybo, till I caught a cramp in my ass from trying to hold my f my foot like this. I was like, ah! I tried it. I almost killed my own self. I'm not made for Tybo. I'm made for, you know, gumbo. <laughs> was invented by fitness guru Billy Blanks. Hi, I'm Billy Blanks. I'm going to welcome you to Total Transformation Training. It's a combination of taekwondo and boxing. Before Billy Blanks came on the scene, the exercise business was dominated by Richard Simmons in some real tight-ass little shorts that he's been wearing since, like, 1970. I rock the party that rocks the body. Billy Blanks came out of nowhere. This black man with this bald head, shiny, this beautiful specimen. He looked like he could break you in half. He was surrounded by the hottest women you've ever seen. You're like, I'm gonna learn Tybo. He just showed us back a little bit. He just looked like a piece of chocolate. And every time he was sweat, it looked like just little drips of chocolate just dripping off his forehead. And I just used to be like, I didn't want to lick your forehead. Fine. You're just doing your Tybo, mind your own business, everything's fine, and then double time hits. Hey, double time, go! One, two, one, three, two, guys, four, four. What are you going to do now? Double time. You're going to move twice as quickly. That's the concept. What are you going to do now? Halfway through, I looked at my girlfriend. I said, let's go have sushi, because I couldn't do it. Oh, my God. It's so hard. Well, everybody hurts. I'm tired, Billy. I'm tired. We won't do no more. Bitch! South Central Los Angeles is a war zone. Angry protesters are setting fires and looting stores in reaction to the stunning Rodney King verdict that was delivered today. Oh, Lord have mercy, Jesus, Rodney King. Well, that was a funny chapter in American history. There were four Los Angeles police officers that uh, were tried and they were acquitted. I was like, what the f is this? The justice is for the other man, not for the brother, man. In all honesty, it was understandable, the outrage. What was not understandable is why outrage equal getting yourself a big screen television. People don't admit that they ride it. I can't get in trouble for this, right? How can I put this? Every star got hit. You just saw people breaking in. In Oakland, we did not riot because rioting interrupts the mail system, <laughs> and we need to get our check. What is love? Can we can we all get along? Don't hurt me. Can we can we get along? Rodney got three point eight million dollars. So he could get along because he was rich. The rest of us are still struggling. I think we finally achieved Rodney King's dream. I think we are all getting along. You and an Arab on VH1. Who would have thunk it? Back to the 90s. We're in our 90s time machine, and Dag's got your back. Or got your black is more like it. <laughs> I am so funny and adept at wordplay. Here's some more cool stuff. Coming up, a nice little show that starred moi. Door girl! <laughs> Atta girl! For more funky time tripping fun, check out Black to the Future on VH1.com. Hi, music lovers. I'm the one and only Fantasia, and these were my soul sisters of the 90s. You better call Tyrone. Erica Badu had the heart of a hippie and the pipes of a goddess. They freed your mind with four point harmonies, the mighty ladies of in standing like a fairy soul godmother over it all the incredible 
Miss Angie Stone. I'm Fantasia, and those were the Velvet Boy Sisters of 90s Soul. I'm out. He's too far away. We'll never catch him. Throw me at him. What? Call me at him. I can do it, partner. No way, man. Too dangerous. Just do it. You can do what you want to do. In living color, do, 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 in living color. Much props to Saturday Night Live and laughing, but in living color is that one that, to me, was one of the greatest comedy shows ever on television. Let me give you one of my business cards. You know I'm French, uh, Howard. In living color was the first time that blacks had a chance to express themselves in no limit form. Keenan Ivory Wayans knew what he was doing. Look at what I got. Superstars have come from that show. Yeah, Jim Carrey started out on there. Let me show you something. Yeah, Jamie Foxx on there. Read my lips. Uh -oh. I got you. Uh -oh. And I am ready to go. <laughs> Kim Wayans as the lady that just was the nosy neighbor. She loved her some Miss Jenkins. No, nobody better say nothing bad about Miss Jenkins, because that's when Benita loses. And then she ended up talking bad about her. That's a fine woman, fine woman. Mm -hmm. Just don't let her take a wig off. Head so bald, you can see her thoughts. Man on film was one of the funniest sketches that that show used to have. Nothing, honey. What'd you say? Nothing, honey. <laughs> I bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> I bet I could. Two snaps in it. There it Hated it. Hated it. I couldn't believe that show went off the air. I thought that would be forever. Everything about it was so classic. Yeah, you know, I used to be able to boogie down with the best of them before I shattered this old hip. Still got a few good moves left in me. Go, go. Keenan would come into and have meetings with us. He'll go, guys, guys, you can't do this. The sensors are on my back. And we go, okay. And then we go and do it again. We're the worst. We're like kids in detention. But I think that's why the show came out so good. Is because we absolutely did not give a f man. Never underestimate the powers of the handicap. <laughs> Back to the 90s. You know, to all of the wonderful folks from In Living.